Okay, now that we've talked a little bit about sizing control surfaces, next I want to move on about how we use those control surfaces to maneuver an aircraft. So this will just be a very high level discussion on aircraft maneuvering and controls. Uh, I've pulled this discussion together from several sources, including the NASA Principles of Flight uh, document that was uploaded to the Clue site. MIT Open Courseware is Course 16.61, Lecture 17, Page 1, for the graphic that I'm going to include here. And actually, a couple of really good Wikipedia articles, which are quite technically correct, on coordinated flight and adverse yaw. So to start, let's consider this is from my key open courseware. The control surfaces and the axes of rotation that they have control authority for. And this was discussed briefly last time, but just as a reminder, first of all, we'll talk about two main, three, or I guess three axes for the aircraft. It has a vertical axis, the longitudinal axis, which is along the axis of the aircraft, and the lateral axis, which is perpendicular to the other two. The ailerons are located on the wings and deflect in opposite directions. One up, one down, this one goes down, this one's going up. These create roll moments that are indicated in red here. To move, rotate the aircraft in pitch, we use the elevator uh, going either up or down on the horizontal tail. And to rotate in yaw, we use the rudder, which turns to the left or right. So generally, when an aircraft's in flight, there's two main types of maneuvers we're interested in. Simply changing altitude, so that's either climbing or descending and turning. First let's talk about climb and descent. So some of what I'm going to develop here is similar to what we've looked at before when we looked at various steady state flying conditions early in the course, but now we're going to relate how you transition between these various states to the use of the control surfaces. So basically to change altitude, we use the elevators. To change the pitch of the aircraft. And this is if we want to do a significant climb. So let's go over what happens when an aircraft climbs, and descent is essentially similar, but opposite. So to start, the aircraft is in steady level flight. Here's our aircraft blob. Thrust force, lift, weight, and drag. And here's the elevator on the horizontal tail. So to climb, we need to rotate the elevator to a negative angle of attack. Like this.
and instantaneously. It's the wing. Nothing changes. But this causes a downward force, a negative lift from the horizontal tail. And when combined with the moment arm to the aircraft center of gravity, we generate a nose up moment so that the aircraft tends to do this. And the pitch angle is theta. So this changes the forces acting on the aircraft, as you can see here. So now we've moved the elevator back to the neutral position now that we've achieved the angle of rotation that we're looking for. But now looking at a force balance. We see that L cos theta equals the weight in the vertical direction and the horizontal direction, the thrust times cos theta equals L sine theta plus D cos theta. So these give us that the lift is the weight over cos theta. So that's greater then uh, the, just the weight, just the cos theta, is always at uh, less, less than or equal to 1. And the thrust is L tan theta plus the drag. And so for positive theta, we see this is greater than the steady level flight drag. So both the lift and the thrust must increase for the aircraft to be able to climb. So this lift is going to increase because the angle of attack has increased, particularly during the rotation of the aircraft. And the thrust, to achieve that increase, uh, we're going to need to increase the engine power. if we want to climb. Now the climb rate, which is just the vertical velocity, is set by the angle of theta, so that V climb is just V infinity, the flight speed, and theta. And at the end of climb, when it's time to resume level flight, then the elevator is deflected the other way to create a nose down moment until we get back to theta equals zero. Then, once again, lift equals weight and thrust equals drag, so the throttle setting can be reduced back to its previous value for steady level flight. 